Greetings family of God. Welcome to another episode of our online broadcast. We pray that you would be blessed with this broadcast and that uh, you would really feel the presence of God even through this medium that we are allowed to to actually come through to you. And uh, even as you will continue this morning, I want you to uh, just feel free if you're on YouTube to comment on our channel, comment to what's happening and uh, tell us where you're from. We would really like to know where you are from and uh, just to be part of you. And uh, you know, although we are apart physically, we know that when we are in one mind and one cord, we are already the body of Christ and God will begin to do something great for us even on an online platform like this. And uh, even as you get into worship, won't you just let down whatever stress you have, whatever, whatever anxiety that you have, whatever problems or situation that's holding you down. Won't you just let go of that? And if you know the song, just join us in worship. If you don't know, just close your eyes and just worship God. Because uh, let me tell you something, in worship, breakthroughs can happen for you. And even as we'll continue with this morning service, I'm going to pray. And uh, even as I pray, I want you to agree that God is going to do something great for you this morning. Amen. Won't you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you for this time that we can come to together father lord father amidst the circumstances that we are in father lord that uh, we can still come together oh lord and worship you online we can still god come together father lord and call upon your name i pray father lord for every part of this uh, online service father lord i pray that your presence will be upon us i pray mighty god that you would bless us in worship bless us in the word bless us father lord in every area father lord i pray that your presence will begin to fall afresh upon us uh, i pray father somebody will be touched this morning somebody father lord that's hopeless father will gain hope Someone of God that's down, Father Lord, will grab unto joy. I pray, Father, that conviction of God would happen through this medium this morning. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being moved. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being raised giants are still being slain cause God we believe yes we can see wonders are still what you do we are
I hope you enjoyed that segment of worship this morning and because of limited time we have to cut that short but uh, I believe that you'll make worship your lifestyle and don't just worship on the Sunday but continue to worship God throughout the week and in your time that worship will actually build you up and encourage you during these trying times for humanity amen and uh, you know what our connect groups happen during the course of this week i know that god will begin to bless you in those week those days will the, those uh, times will be uh, sent to you during the course of this week so just look out for that and i thank god for what he's done last week in connect and also for our previous word last week sunday on communion i believe that god is really doing good things for us and uh, you can revisit those those videos and uh, get new revelation and try and learn of what god wants us to know for this current time and this season there's been a great uh, uh, day in this week amen and it was Nathaniel's birthday and I believe that Nathaniel had a good day. I messaged him and he gave me back such a good response. And I know that God is going to use Natty in a great way in the days to come. As a young man, he's going to be accelerated and uh, just allow God to just take control of every decision that you would make, Natty. And we know that you'll be blessed with good health and strength for all the days to come. We also want to remember Uncle Ruben once again for uh, his mom had passed away during the course of this week. And uh, I want you to remember him. Maybe if you do have his number, send him a word of encouragement. And uh, just remember them in prayer this morning. Uh, we also don't want to forget our praise and prayer request. Amen. It's on the, it's the details are at the bottom of the screen right now. If you have a prayer request, send it through and we want to pray with you. And if you have a praise request, we want to also know about it and uh, we want to be happy with you this morning. Amen. But whatever it is, we want to be a part of your life this morning. So don't forget to send your, to send your praise and prayer request to the details that are at the bottom of the screen. Amen. For all your giving this morning and for your tithes, you can see the details that will come up at the bottom of your screen. If you, uh, you are still giving your tithes and offering, man, you can just do an EFT on those details. And I believe that God will begin to, to bless you. It's a commandment of God and God will begin to bless you with regards to the Bible says that prove me now. Prove me now, even in this crisis time, because God will still carry us and he will, he will move us from one level to another, even without fear, without lack. And uh, even as we get into God's word this morning, I believe that there is something that God wants to speak to our hearts. That's why you are on this platform. That's why you are tuned in this morning. And uh, if you know of somebody that doesn't have, uh, have uh, access to this, uh, I, won't, I would encourage you just to go ahead and speak to them and try and help them out to get into this because God's word needs to get out into people so that people's lives can be touched and changed. And this word is going to challenge you this morning. I believe that this word is going to change your heart and it will come with such authority that something will begin to convict you on the inside and uh, you'll begin to turn from your current situation into where God wants you to be focused and uh, begin to get hope again once again and uh, even as I pray for you uh, very quickly I want you to know that uh, that next week you'll be coming back to the same place same time and don't forget that and even as you pray just remember that God is looking to do something good in your life and to bring you back into where you're supposed to be Father, I thank you for this morning once again. I thank you for the opportunity that you've given us, Lord, to give into your kingdom. I pray, Father, Lord Jesus, God, that you bless every heart that's given. Father, Lord, I pray. Father, Lord, that you'll begin to touch right now, Holy Spirit, I pray. I pray, Father, Lord Jesus, God, that there'll be no lack even in this current time. Father, Lord, that we would love, oh God, oh Father, in abundance, Father, because of your word and because of the obedience, of God, of our hearts. We pray for your word that will come forth this morning, Father, I pray. Father, Lord, even as, Father, Lord, the set woman will speak, Father, I pray, oh God, that the presence of God will begin to come through this channel. Father, Lord Jesus, God, that no matter where we are placed,
placed and no matter where we are situated, oh God, the presence of God, Father Lord, will begin to come upon us. That conviction, oh God, will begin to touch our heart. That we will be infected, oh God, oh Father, with faith. We will be infected, oh God, with your presence. That fear will begin to be removed far from the heart of your people, oh God. We thank you, Father Lord, for the word that's going to come forth. I pray, Father, let it convict us, oh God. Let it bring us back, oh God, into the heart of worship. We thank you for this right now. We give you the glory. We give you the praise and we give you the honor. And all God's people said, Amen. Good morning. Peace to you. Peace to your home. And peace to all that you have. We thank God for his mercies and his grace, as well as his kindness towards us. This is my prayer that God has kept us safe until this day. And he will continue to keep us until this pandemic is over. I request to all the children of the house to stay safe and don't be caught unaware during this time. Before I start my message, I just want to say a big thank you to two of my sons that continuously every week after the morning service, they sent me a message to say thank you for the word. And I want to say I thoroughly appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I want to say thank you to Jeremy, who religiously sends me a message every week to thank me for the word. And then I want to say a, thank, a big thank you to Ziad, just for his words of encouragement and also for being hungry to learn more about God's word. I will continue giving you as much information as you require. Together with my family, I want to just say thank you for just being an encouragement to me. I want to start my message with a simple statement. Whenever God wanted something to be done on the earth, he created what he wanted in the thing. When God wanted birds to fly, he created flight in the bird. Have you ever seen a bird trying to fly? No. They were created with flight on the inside of them. When God wanted a fish to swim, he created swim in the fish. No fish goes to a swimming school to learn how to swim. It's built on the inside of them. It is the nature of a thing. And it's the nature of a fish to swim. When God created man, he created him in his image and in his likeness. What was God's idea for creating men? If swim is in the fish and flight is in the bird, what is in man that God requires? We should have the image, nature, and the dominion power of God Almighty. What was the purpose for Jesus coming to earth? What did Jesus do for three and a half years of ministry on the earth? Let's find out. I want you to go to Luke 22. Luke chapter 22. There's one verse that, stick, that stands out for me, but I will read from verses 14 to 16. When the hour had come, he sat down with the 12 apostles with him. And he said to them, with fervent desire, I have decided to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Remember, I brought this verse last week. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God that he's speaking about here? I'm going to explain you some things and I want you to take recognition of it. Jesus came to restore us as kings. We lost our kingship and our kingdom. Today we're going to look at our dominion mandate. The Bible is a book about a kingdom. Obviously, when you use the word kingdom, you automatically 
have a king. The Bible is a kingdom book. The word that God uses for sin in the Bible, in the Hebrew language and in the New Testament Greek, the word for sin is rebellion. Now, in the kingdom of God, there was one person who attempted to overthrow the government of God, and his name is Satan. You all remember him. Don't fool with God's government. He was a musician who thought he could organize a coup against the kingdom of God. A musician! Can you imagine? The guy wasn't even a soldier. All he had was, was notes to fight with. That's why the Bible calls his weapons fiery darts. He decided that he didn't like the government of God and that he would therefore organize a coup. So he influenced one third. He influenced one third of the angels of the kingdom and they went up to take care of business. And we all know the results, don't we? In a blink of an eye, he was thrown out of heaven. It was over. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. It was finished. Ever since that day, the great king of glory and heaven and the universe tolerates nobody. And Satan was then an unemployed cherub. Firstly, the kingdom of earth was given to Adam. That was the reason for God's creation, was to dominate the earth as a son of God, which he willfully gave to an unemployed cherub. Adam sold his birthright or gave it to an unemployed cherub and he was thrown out of heaven. Now let's read the Bible. Excuse me, now let's read the Bible and see what is our mandate, what is the purpose for our creation, and what is expected of us. Genesis 1, 26, my favorite verse. And God said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over everything that creeps upon the ground. In Genesis chapter 1, we find God doing something. He is creating man in his own image, in his own likeness. And he gives this man dominion, power. What is dominion? This is the heart of man's fulfillment on earth. God created men as his extended family on the earth, not to sing songs, not to attend a worship service, not to have prayer meetings, not to even have church meetings, good as it is, that was not God's aim for you. God did not create you to have Bible study. That was never God's plan for us. God's plan was very clear. His plan was to have a family of children who would share in his dominion. He dominates the heaven. His children should dominate the earth. So all of the family dominates. That's God's plan. God's plan was for you and I to share in his dominion. God created a place for us to do that. It's called Earth. Now he is called the King of the Universe. All through the Bible, he's referred to as the ruler, the Almighty God, the King of all kings. He is the King. King means ruler or one who sets standards. 
So a king is the one who sets the standard for everything. God is called the king of the universe and the king of all creation. That means he establishes the standard for everything that exists. And anything that falls below that standard is not pleasing to God. God therefore created you to maintain his standard on earth. That's what kings do. God gave us this planet so that we could keep his standard on the earth. What is God's standard that we are supposed to make sure that everything in this planet is maintained? What is God's standard? What is God's standard that we are supposed to make sure that everything on this planet is being maintained to the standard of God? Can I explain it? God's standard is to make sure that the earth looks just like heaven. Does the earth look like heaven to you? Does the earth look like heaven now? That's what kingship is on the earth. So man was created to dominate. That means to keep the rulership standard of God on the planet. So the son's job is to keep the domain up to the standard of the king. When God gave us the planet, he was telling us, have dominion over the earth. Matthew 24 verses 14 says, He said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. What must be preached to the whole world? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into the whole world as a testimony. Is that the testimony you are hearing today? You will see the whole world wants to hear a testimony about a kingdom. Now everybody's been praying for the end to come. Because they want to go to heaven. I'm talking about believers now. Have you heard the phrase that no one knows the hour when the Son of Man cometh? That was stated very clearly by Jesus. In Matthew chapter 24, the disciples asked him a question. And the whole chapter is the answer to that question. When will the end come? They wanted to know. His answer was very clear. He said, there shall be wars and rumors of war. Then he said, there'll be famine and pestilence. Have you heard that before? Then he says, there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. He says, there will be signs in the sun. Well, our ozone layer is in trouble. The ice caps are melting. The ocean is rising. One foot every ten years. That means the sea is reclaiming land. There shall be signs in the heavens. But then he says, the end is not yet. The end is not yet. A lot of preachers are saying the end is now. Christ says no. The end is not yet. The signs of the end are not earthquakes and famines. Read your Bible. Jesus said, when these things happen, the end is not yet. Then he gave us when the end will come. It's in this chapter, he says, and when this gospel, and when this gospel, what gospel? The kingdom is preached into all the world, to every nation, every culture, every special group, when they get the kingdom message. Only when they get the kingdom message. Then we'll know we're near the end. Now let me ask you a question. Is the church preaching the kingdom? They preach faith messages. 
they preach prosperity, they preach healing, they preach baptism of the Holy Ghost, they preach walking in faith, they preach all the stuff, but they don't preach the kingdom. Now don't get me wrong, when you got the kingdom, all these things are in the kingdom. You're supposed to walk in healing, baptism of the Holy Spirit, faith, prosperity. But they, well, that is not the message. Christ says the end will come when the whole world has heard the message of the kingdom of God. They must see the kingdom on the earth. When the end will come, when the end will come, which means that you could unpack your bags because based on what we've been doing the last 2,000 years, the world hasn't seen the kingdom yet. In some cases, people preach their own religion. They preach their own denomination. Some are so hung up on some parts of theology that that becomes the message. The kingdom of God is the message. Now, why is this so important? Why did God say that the kingdom is what the world needs to hear? Can I tell you why? Because the kingdom is what everybody is looking for. Every religion is looking for the kingdom of God. You are looking for the kingdom of God. You are not looking for religion. Why? Why? How do I know you are not looking for, the, for, 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 for religion? Why do I know you are not looking for religion? You are looking for the kingdom of God and what it promises. Do you remember Jesus told this parable? Every single day he kept teaching in parables. There's a parable he gave one time that proves that everybody wants the kingdom. He said there was a man that had a job working in a field. He was a digger. He was weeding the field for somebody. And while he was digging and cleaning up, while he was digging and cleaning up the person's property, he found treasure. Interesting, eh? Now you may ask, how would treasure be in a field? Why would somebody put treasure in a field? Here's the answer. In the days of Jesus, and they still do it today, in the Middle East, there are no banks. So when you have treasure, whether it's gold, silver, diamonds, jewels, precious coins, whatever, when you had that kind of jewels or treasure, there was no safety deposit boxes. So here is what they did. They would take the treasure, tie it in a cloth, and they would go out in the hills and they would find a spot. They would dig a hole and they would bury the treasure and they would cover it up and then put stones to mark it. Now there are millions of rocks all over Palestine. For those who have been there would remember, that's a rocky place. So there's, therefore the only person who knew where the spot was, was the person who put it there. So people would walk over that spot for years, never knew that there was treasure there because that was the way they kept the treasure. It was like a bank. So when he said this man was working in a field, it wasn't his field. Of course, he had a higher job. He was digging probably, preparing the land for crops. And while digging, he came upon somebody else's treasure. The Bible says, the man looked this way and that way. Why? Because he wants to make sure whoever, whoever owned the property is not, is not around. And then the Bible says he covered it up and went out and borrowed money. 
This is, a, this is an important parable. He borrowed money, came back, and went to the owner of the property, and he asked him to sell it. He asked him to sell his property, and the man sold it, and he bought the property. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, he sold everything he had to buy the property. This man decided that what he found in this field was more important than everything he accumulated in his entire life. And the Bible says he went and he bought the field. And then the next statement says, such is the kingdom of God. Wow. First of all, God is saying, your job is not fulfilling you. You're working hard for other people, but what you're really looking for is the kingdom of God. Then he says, that big house you got, that nice car you got, is not fulfilling you. What you're really looking for that's hidden is the kingdom of God. He told so many parables like that, didn't he? He spoke about a woman who was searching for a coin she lost. She turned the house upside down until she found it. That's what people are doing in religion. They're going everywhere searching. What they are actually looking for is the kingdom of God. Some of us even found religion, which is Christianity, and still haven't found the kingdom. Why is the kingdom so important that you would sell everything you have to get this one thing why is the kingdom so important here's why because you want power genesis 1 26 says you want dominion god gave it to you it's in you it's what you own it's on the inside of you. And what is on the inside is seeking and is desiring what it was created for. Dominion. God says, I created you to have dominion. I want to show you why Jesus came to earth because we lost the kingdom. Firstly, he came to, to earth to extend the kingdom of heaven on earth. That is why he said, when you pray, pray this way. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. As it is in heaven. That's an important statement. Jesus came to earth to extend the heavenly kingdom through the agency of his sons. When God created man, God wanted his kingdom to be established on the earth through these beings just like him called mankind. Secondly, he wanted to establish a family of sons, not servants. That's why God calls himself father, not boss. God doesn't want servants. He wants sons. Thirdly, Jesus came to establish the kingdom of sons and not subjects. And this is where the kingdom of heaven diverges from the kingdoms of the earth. The king happens to be the big brother of all the citizens. What a kingdom! Which means that you can't go wrong in this kingdom. Because anything you need, the family is involved. The family of God is involved. Was the family involved in your creation? Was the family of God involved in your creation? Let's read it. Let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. It's a family affair. Therefore, Jesus came to reinstate the sons 
and he came to establish a commonwealth of citizens and not Christians. And I like the word commonwealth because it means the wealth in the kingdom is common. When you come into the kingdom of God, you don't have less, less rights than I do. Everybody's got the same right. Do you remember when Christ came the seas? And he did all this great work and healed the sick and opened blind eyes and the disciples asked him, Oh, Master, increase our faith. What were they saying? You got more faith than us. That's why you're doing more than us. What was Jesus' answer? He says, wrong. You are wrong. He says, if your faith is as big as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed. And it won't. In this kingdom, everybody's got equal power. Wow. He even gets a little bit more audacious. The king responds, Greater works than these shall you do, citizens. What kind of kingdom is this, that the citizens are as powerful as the king? And according to the king, will even do greater works do you like this kingdom? You see, we got this idea. There is a great Jesus and there is a lowly me. Christ says, no. You are seated with me in heavenly places. I got to work on your mind. You see, we got religion. You must understand who he said you are. Not what people said you should be. Do you know people treat you the way you treat yourself? By the way you attract people just like you. Do you know you attract like-minded people to you? You want to know who you like? Check the people who you surround yourself with. If you like gossip, that's who you will attract. If you're the first person they bring stories to, that's who you will attract because that's who you are. If people who tell lies are attracted to you, you see, we've got to be cautious. Jesus came not to create a religion. He came to restore his family. I told the story about the prodigal son in my previous messages. That's the story about a family and it was a kingdom story. It was a son who left home but the father stayed at home and waited for the son to, to return. When the son comes back home, the son requested to be a servant in the house. That's religion. I just want to serve the Lord. Lord, I just want a little place by the gates of the kingdom. Lord, I just want a cabin just over the hilltop. That's not God. what God wants for you. I want you to look at the word dominion in, the ver in that verse. I want to define it for you. Firstly, it is to rule the visible earth from the invisible, which is heaven, through the invisible, which is the Holy Spirit, living in the visible. That is the body. That's what the whole Bible is about. Let's have dominion over the fish, the birds, the trees, the plants. God says, I want to rule the earth, but stay in heaven. And I want to do it through my sons living in the body on the earth. God wanted you to dominate the earth for him. With him connected to you through the Holy Spirit. You are his spirit, which he is. And the two spirits communicate 
Your spirit gives it to the body. The body gives it to the earth. And the earth manifests the will of God. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that a beautiful system? Yes, it is. In other words, earth supposed to know what heaven is thinking by what you do. By what you do. Earth is supposed to experience the extent of God or the will of God by being manifested in your standardization in the earth. Can you thank God for his word? Can you? Let me give you another example. Jesus one day woke up in John chapter 5 and he was walking. He met a guy who was blind, healed him. Met a guy who was lame, gave him back his strength. He walked and he saw a leper, cleansed him. He ran into a situation and saw a dead boy, raised him. He was just working miracles upon miracles that day. I mean, Jesus was on a roll. He was on a mission. And by the afternoon, everybody's head was spinning. So they asked him, how did you do these things? By what authority did you do these things? Wow. He said, my father is always working. I only do what I see my father do. He said, look, in the invisible world, God healed the guy. So I have to manifest it. He said, look, that man who was lame is healed in heaven. But God needed an agency to manifest it on the earth. So I touched him. In heaven, nobody is sick. And so according to heaven, this man is healed. Because nobody is sick in the unseen. So the only sickness that exists on the earth, and God hasn't got any connection. You Pharisees and scribes are the ones not connected. There's no dominion of the sickness on the earth. You are not dominating the sickness. Most of what's not happening in your neighborhood is because you are not doing anything about it. Jesus is telling us that God's already done all kinds of things. He just can't find a man to manifest it on the earth. Listen, no wonder why God could say by his stripes, you were healed. You already healed. Even before you got sick, you were healed in the heavenlies. I only do what I see my father do. And by the way, the word see, there is a strange Aramaic, Aramaic, sorry, Aramaic word used for, used, which means to think. The word see means to think. So if you really read it in the raw English, the way you spoke it, it comes out like this. I only do what I see my father think. So what you see me do was done long before it was done. Isn't that beautiful? That's the kingdom. That means in heaven it's done already. The king is done dominating heaven. The king is dominating heaven. And there's no disease in heaven. There's no poverty in heaven. John, the beloved, remember he had a vision. John says even the streets are paved with gold there. The gates got pearls there. On earth people are fussing for pearls up here. They make furniture out of it in heaven. It doesn't mean there are literally pearls in heaven. I think what John was seeing was the stuff we fight about. God uses for a carpet diamonds. His rugs are made out of diamonds. He was talking about an attitude. In other words, poverty is not normal for God. In heaven, God is wealthy. 
So he's looking for some signs to show that on the earth. Some say Jesus was poor. Let me ask you a question. And I'll prove it to you. He met some guys or some of his disciples who was poor. They had no fish, toiled all night and stayed up all morning, scared to go home because, because how are they going to tell their wives? How were they going to tell their wives they got no money? You're wondering why Peter, James and John didn't go home that morning? I don't blame them. They fished all night. They caught no fish. And Sister Peter was waiting with a pot on the stove at home to cook fish. And the Bible says they stayed mending their nets. And he met them in the morning mending their nets. I got a question for you. If you caught no fish or the, or the, the disciples caught no fish, how come they were mending their, their broken nets? So obviously they were lying, sitting there, scared to go home. Jesus comes along. He knew what they were thinking. He walks up to these guys and he doesn't need anything. They are broke, empty boats. He said, let's go fishing. Let me tell you something. If Jesus wanted to start a fishing company, he would have put everybody out of business. Have you ever thought about that? He knew he was wealthy. Jesus stood in the boat with those guys who were professional fishermen and caught nothing. And in three minutes, the boat was sinking with so much of fish. And that was only in one trip. Do you know what that meant? That meant in heaven there was a boatload of fish. I only do what I see my father do. My father just filled a boat full of fish, so I filled a boat full of fish. I wonder how many bank accounts is the Lord filled and you still looking for scraps. We speak those things that be not just as though they were. Because they are already there. But he needs you to speak the word. Just say, I am healed now. I want you to say, all my bills are paid, were paid now. Thank him. Use your faith. Pull that thing out of the unseen. That's kingdom living. God wants his kingdom of heaven to show up on the earth through his sons. I'm going to stop here this morning. I can go on and on and on telling you of what the kingdom has and what it wants you to have. But I'll stop here and I want you to think about this word. Pray over it. Believe it. God wants you to have more than enough. In heaven it's done already. On the earth it needs to manifest and it can only manifest through you, in you, and for you. Let's bow over here as we, as we pray this prayer this morning and say, Father, I only do what I see my Father do. In heaven there is no shortage. Earth will have no shortage. In heaven there is no sickness. Earth should have no sickness. Am I walking the kingdom on the earth? Am I making a difference for you? Can my family, the people around me, the people I work with, the people I talk to, the people I associate with, can they see kingdom living through me? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word came so plain and forceful. And I thank you, Lord, when we live like kingdom citizens, there is nothing we can be short of. You own everything, dear Father God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 
And Father, the earth was created for your children, Lord. The earth was created for our for us to dominate, dear Father God. The earth was created for our good pleasure. Are we enjoying it, Lord? Father God, your children, Lord, are struggling, Lord. Your children are trying to make ends meet, dear Father God. It is not like that in the heavens. You gave us a kingdom. And if we live in the kingdom, Lord, we are kingdom citizens. We live in common wealth and we thank you, Lord. The wealth is common in heaven and we bring it down to earth, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven has no shortage. Earth will have no shortage. We claim that in our lives and we know you're a God that is more than enough. You're a God of abundance and you will make it come to pass in our lives. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor, Lord. Be it unto us according to your word, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, holy, and loving name, amen and amen. Thank you, beloved. I pray that from this day forward, you'll walk in the abundance of God's grace and his mercy and his ever-abiding love. God bless you, and thank you for listening. I love you.